File integrity monitoring is not only necessary to be compliant with standards like PCI DSS, it's also a very useful security control. We can use it to track specific operating system files that are modified by malware and other malicious activity. We can use it to track specific application files that we know shouldn't change, or at least should follow regular change management processes. And we can also use it simply to ensure we have some kind of audit log of modifications of files. Let's take a look at how we can implement file integrity monitoring on Mac, Windows, and Linux using Uptix. Imagine that you have a web server that's used to process payments on an e-commerce website. If someone broke into that server using an exploit for the application that's currently running with known vulnerabilities, or maybe they stole some credentials to log into that server, what they'd probably want to do is modify the payment form so that the credit cards can still go to you and the payment still be processed properly, but they'd probably want to set it up so they also get a copy of those credit card numbers. So they would edit that payment form and they'd probably have to insert some evil stuff, though it probably wouldn't be those actual words and be some JavaScript code that would get inserted in the web browser. And then they would save that file. That could be done interactively via SSH like I just did, but can also be done through whatever exploitation method they're using. Now, how would we detect that that's happened and how it happened? Well, using optics and OS query events, we know really quickly that this file was modified. If we go back and refresh our optics alert, we see that these changes have been detected. And in fact, VI creates temporary files. So there's more than one change that's been detected. So if we click on this, we see that this file here, the .php.swp was created. So that's a temporary file, so that is expected. Now, what is more worrying is if we look at the file names right here and we look at the actual form pay.php, we see that it was updated at 1748. Now, how do we know who modified that file and how that happened? Well, using the power of OS query and optics, we can investigate and we can find a lot of data around what was going on on that system at the time. For example, we can select the process events table, which contains a list of every process that was executed. And we can look to see where the command line contain the terms form pay, which is our file name. So if we do that, we should see every instance of a text editor or tools like cat pointing to form pay, because that's going to be included in the process events table. And sure enough, we see right here that uh, vi form pay.php was recorded. We have a few more instances right here of the utility touch that was used when setting up the demo environment to be sure that everything was set up properly. And if we look here, we can see that the directory the person was working from was this, and the UID that was used was zero. So this was executed as root. So in this case, you would have to investigate further to know, well, who has the ability to SSH in as root. And if we go back to the alerts page, as you can see, if someone had been connecting from a suspicious IP over SSH, for example, you would know that right away. Now, investigating after the fact is one thing, but we have to configure file integrity monitoring properly. And on optics, configuring it on all operating systems is essentially the same thing. Under file monitoring, we have different profiles that we can create. The one that got triggered on the modification of the payment form is the one that we call payment form. This configuration looks for changes to any file under the checkout directory, and it has no exclusion. You can create exclusions. For example, if there were a lot of log files in that directory, you could exclude dot log files. You can create very flexible monitoring patterns with that, including subdirectories or not, excluding subdirectories only for certain files, and so on. In this case, we're looking for a very specific set of files in the checkout directory of our WordPress website. But we also include some out-of-the-box configurations. For example, on the Mac side, we monitor some very specific files in the Etsy directory that shouldn't be modified for no reason. It should only be modified by a system update, for example. But if we created the profile to monitor the entire Etsy directory, subfolders, and every file under it, you may not want to receive an alert for every change. Maybe you're just configuring that so you have a nice audit log of what happened. Well, with uptics under the alert rules, in this case, we were using the critical file alerts alert rule. And you can decide exactly 
using the logic that's available if you want to receive alerts for every FIM monitoring configuration that you have or only specific ones. This is where you could add exceptions to not receive some alerts, for example, the entire Etsy folder that you want, don't want to hear about. But this is also where you add different destinations. For example, you could send the alerts to Slack on top of sending them to an email. You could even send them to a custom webhook. That lets you set up a FIM environment on all operating systems that is flexible, that minimizes the noise, and that will rapidly tell you when these critical files are being modified. So hopefully now you understand a bit more about file integrity monitoring and how to implement it using optics on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Thank you. Thank you.